children, uh, teaching them how to distinguish facts from opinions. And last night, I, I, it happens that was a Filipino mother and uh, teaching to the child how to distinguish facts and opinion. Because it looks easy, but it's not. Many times we are confused. So this mother says, you are Filipino. Is a fact or is an opinion? Is a fact. If you go to school and they say you're ugly, is a fact or an opinion? Opinion. If they say your, sh your shoes are out of fashion or with they, uh, they, they, they are not beautiful shoes, is a fact or an opinion? It's an opinion. And it's clear, but sometimes from we are children up to we are adult, it's very dis difficult to distinguish facts from opinion. And I was thinking to this because how come the disciples, they follow Jesus for many years and they still didn't understand the real meaning of love or being with Jesus because they were discussing with them who is the greatest among us. But the worst thing is to see when and where they ask this question. They were in Capernaum and Jesus has told them, I'm going to die for you. I'm going to give my life for you. And then they were going to Jerusalem. So you can imagine Jesus is focused on his mission to give his life. And at the back, they were talking among them, oh, who is the greatest among us? I don't know if uh, another image, uh, there are some movies, there are some people that they can read other people's mind. I mean, what people are thinking, the other people they can, they can know. It's very terrifying, right? If now I can see what you are thinking, some people they are thinking, Oh, I would like to not be here to, to swimming, or wow, this father is so boring, or wow, I like the, <laughs> like the man, like the woman. So, if we can know the thinking, so you can imagine how the disciples felt when Jesus said, What are you talking about? They, are, they were far. But Jesus knew. So, he kept silence. When they reached home, they asked, What were you discussing among the room? Who is the greatest? But it's very important to understand why the disciples were discussing about this. Is this also our thinking sometimes? Yes, maybe every day. Very often we think, am I, a, am I the greatest or am I good? So if I, what's your name? Rose. If I tell Rose, wow, I like you so much today, you, you look very beautiful. And then I keep talking, wow, you are, you, I like your voice when you read. Other people, why, why he picked her and he didn't pick me? Start to be a bit jealous. Or, I want to be seen, I'm here also. Can you see me? I'm also beautiful. I'm also good. Why you pick Rose and you didn't pick me, right? Very easy. We go there. Especially if this didn't happen when we were small. Each one of us carry a child inside that is our experience when we were a child. When we are. So if when we were at home, we didn't feel the love. Uh, if we were doubting about really, am I really good? Or my brother is good? Or why my father is like this with me? Why my father is like this with me? So this is an opinion but becomes a fact. I am not good. So behind every scene or this kind of thinking, there is a positive, there's a positive desire. What is the positive desire here? I want to be loved. I want to be seen. This is the positive desire. So if you think every time we commit a scene, we are only finding a solution or a way to fulfill this positive need in a wrong way. Every sin, if we examine our sins, behind our sins, there is something good. These desires, I want to be seen. So today we understand why many times we are jealous. 
why we need to gossip many times? Actually, uh, I study psychology and one of my classmates, her PhD uh, thesis was about gossiping. Why people, so she spent three years studying, <laughs> studying gossiping, research, yeah. She sent a questionnaire, she interviewed people, and then what she found out, like many other results before, people that gossip more, or people that they think are the best, it's because they, actually, if you go inside, inside, they have this great doubt. I'm not good. In order to be good, I have to diminish other people. In order to be good, I have to cut off other people. I have to destroy other people. But you can imagine, if the disciples really understood what Jesus was doing for them, was loving them so much, how can they think who is the greatest among us? Who is the greatest today here? It's me because I have the mind. I'm wearing this, or he is Brother Dennis because he has the picture, so he can he can decide if you appear good, if you appear beautiful or not, or is someone that is uh, that gets the key of the kitchen, uh, so she decides or they decide if we eat or not. Who is the greatest here? Is the one that studied more? It's very difficult for us to understand this kind of love. Since we are kids, we want to be the favorite ones. And when we think this, the favorite can be me or you. But for Jesus, is me and you. So we, at the same time, we are the favorite. Of course, when we are in the family, I also joke with my, we also joke each other with my brother, and I have an elder brother, elder sister, and they say, oh, uh, our parents love you more because they do this, our parents love you more because of this. I think it's just they love in a different way. But sometimes the parents have their favorite ones, right? But Jesus not. Or each one of us is the favorite one. So on that day, they were discussing among them who is the greatest. I, during this day, I'm a bit busy because I'm um, leading the training of psychology. And yesterday we were practicing, and one of the students, she's a psychologist, but when we practice she brings some real story. She said, one issue I want to bring here today to be held is that I cannot be angry. For example, now we went for lunch, the waiter, I had to wait one and a half hour to get the food. I had a lot of anger inside, but I couldn't express this anger. And then I said, oh, maybe she's living in Thailand, in an island, and she said the immigration there is very bad. In order to get something, you have to give bribe, you have to give money. And so she doesn't like this, but she cannot get angry with them. And then we went back. And she said, oh, I couldn't get angry with my father, even if he did bad things to me. And then we went through, and why? Because every time, especially when I was a kid, even if I was right, my mother told me, I told you, you're wrong, it's your fault. Even if my anger was good, my father told me, you cannot express your anger. And then we helped them, we helped her, and suddenly, she said, now I feel like I'm bronze. I feel my blood is bronze. I think I have value. I can feel my strength now. I can feel my anger. And so she started screaming toward the waiters, toward the immigration officers, and toward the father. And it's the, the most difficult ones. So what was the problem? Because she couldn't feel her value. So even if things were not fair, she couldn't express the anger. Because anger was together with shame. So if we constantly gossiping or want I have a doubt inside, it's because we have shame. What is shame? I am not good. I am not lovable. So 
two things that we do when we have shame, we keep far from people, otherwise they will see I'm not good, or we, we inflate ourselves to be the best. Oh, I am the best singer, I am the best cook. And so we talk, 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 and never listen. This is one of the signs that we don't have love if we just want to be seen. So it's not a problem, but we have to, uh, we cannot receive this love from the people in front of us. This certain to be, certain to be love comes from this love. This is an unconditional love from God. So I was thinking also to John Baptist de la Sam. I think it was many things happening in his life. I think it was not his plan, uh, what happens later. But then at the end, he found his passion in helping the children. But I think also because he was able to help his own inner child. Each one of us has his own inner child. Sometimes he's suffering, sometimes he's doubting, am I good or not? Only when we take care of our inner child, when we love ourselves, we are able to take care of other people, other children. So one way is when we face someone, some conflicts, is to try to see in the other person their inner child. Not this big person that is screaming to us, but the inner child that needs to be seen, to be understood, to be calm. Not easy to do, but we have to do this with ourselves. So in this Eucharist, we ask God through the intercession of John Baptist de la Salle to heal, heal our wounds, our inner child. Each one of us has, I have a lot, you have, but together, as a, as a community that pray Jesus, we can heal each other, praising each other, helping us to understand we are the favorite ones, not because we have abilities, but because we are who we are. Jesus is loving us as we are now. God bless you.